Hi everyone, today I am going to do a look which was featured on my blog. I'd done a shoot with the Saturdays and I put all the pictures up on my blog and I asked for people to vote for the one they liked the best and that was the one I'd make the tutorial on. They were all actually really popular so I had to kind of add them all up and Una, the look on Una, just won. So it's a very sort of dark, um, heavy liner look. So that's the look I'm going to do today and I'm going to do it on the beautiful Thai. Thai is a mixture between Spanish, Jamaican and English so she's a really interesting beauty, quite exotic looking and I absolutely love her freckles so I hope you enjoy the look. Okay I'm going to start by using Makeup Forever High Definition Elixir and just a few drops of this as a primer. This will just help to give a really smooth finish and just really prep the skin ready for foundation. Next I'm going to use Makeup Forever High Definition Foundation in number 140. A little bit, bit on the back of my hand. This is just going to be slightly warmer than Ty's skin tone, just a fraction. And I just want a nice sheer coverage. What I don't want to do is cover Ty's freckles because I really like them. So it's a nice thin layer of foundation. Next I'm going to use the Eclat Miracle by Lancome and this is just a really sort of very subtle highlighter that I'm going to use all over the cheeks and other areas of the face that I want to highlight. You can just put a little bit on the back of your hand and mix it in with your foundation that you've got on there already. And I'm going to use it all over the cheek area. So that's the highlighter. It is very subtle, but it will catch the light really nicely, especially as I layer on the other makeup. So this will all show through onto the cheek, center of the forehead, down the nose, and top lip. And for the shoot, this was something that I felt worked really nicely with the lights too. For concealer, I'm going to use Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation in Beige. Not that you need much concealing, I'm just going to use a little bit on the chin area. So after applying the concealer just where we need it, underneath Ty's eyes, I'm going to make sure that that edge is really blended in. So we can't really see where the concealer ends and the highlighting begins. I'm just going to set that concealer with a very light dusting of Chanel powder. This is just translucent powder. Next I'm going to use a Bobbi Brown Longwear Shadow. This one is Sandy Gold. I'm going to use this all over Ty's lids. I'm just going to use it with my fingers to start with. This is a good primer for the eyeshadow I'm going to do in a second and also it's going to give me a nice smooth base. And I did a little bit of eyebrow plucking before we started so we've got a little bit of redness up there so it's going to disguise that too. I'm going to use a Paula Dorf brush, sheer crease brush, just to make sure it's really soft at those edges as well and completely perfect. I think when you're using a, a primer like this on the eyes, whether it's a paint pot or a, it is a good idea to get the, those edges really, really thin. It just looks more professional and it doesn't sort of take away from whatever eyeshadow you're going to do next. I'm also going to add quite a bit really into this inner corner so we've got something that's going to really highlight as well. Just look up for me. So just a little bit extra in there. The eyeshadows that I used on Una were from a Dior palette which has since been discontinued. It's called Elegant. So I've got this one which is very, very similar by Suku. I'm going to start by using a mixture of the dark brown and this lighter brown. So I'm just going to mix them together. You can see they're quite pigmented so I don't need very much. And I'm just going to begin shading quite high into the socket and coming into the inner corner. Once I've sort of mapped out the shape that I'd like, I can then go in again with a lighter shade and start really buffing and blending that colour in. So 
So exactly the same on the other eye, just mapping out a high socket. So it's actually above the natural socket line. So that's the part of the sh shading done. So we've got it into the socket line, coming into the inner corners here. And you can see that's just going to really frame nicely the eyeliner. I think I'll do more blending and more decisions about exactly where it should be once the eyeliner's on. Now because I want the eyeliner to be quite thick, I'm going to use MAC Liquid Eyeliner in Black Boot. And um, it's quite a good chunky sized felt, so it's really good for you doing a slightly thicker line. So I'm going to get right down to the roots, just patting the liner right into the roots of the lashes. This is sort of before I start doing a line. I'm really lifting it up as well. And once I've got everything done at the roots, then I can drop the brow and then start to build up. And when I get to the outer edge, I'm going to lift up the brow again. So I've done a basic shape. This is not the finished thing, so I'm going to use gel eyeliner to actually get the perfect shape that I'm looking for. But this is mapping out where roughly I want it to be. And I'm going to do the same with this underneath. So just look up for me. And this is going to be a bit messy, but this is going to give me a good base that I can use the gel on top. So now I'm using the Maybelline Gel Eyeliner in Black just to smooth in the liquid liner and to start building up the shape underneath. It's going to be quite a hard line. If you want something softer, you could use the gel eyeliner on its own and then blend it in with a little black or dark grey eyeshadow for a softer result. When I get to this outer corner, I'm going to need to join these two lines up. So I'm going to start by bringing the bottom line up. So I'm bringing up from the bottom to the top and filling in that gap in between. You just have to really pull up your eyelid for this. Painting in the waterline with exactly the same gel liner, making sure there's no gap in between the waterline area and the liner on the outside. So once everything's joined up, then you can decide what kind of shape you actually want to go for. And also if you look straight ahead, you can see where you might need to fill in any little gaps, like there. Or you might decide that actually you want to extend out a little bit further. In which case you need to bring again from underneath, you need to bring the line out from, from down there. And you can smooth any edges as well that you think, if any edges are sort of bumpy. So this is the bit that takes time really with the gel liner, just looking straight ahead, checking where you need to thicken it, deciding if you like the shape. Um, I've slightly extended out a little bit more. And now that I've extended out a little bit more, I think I need to blend in here a little bit more as well. So all of these kind of tweaks are the things that sort of make the difference between a kind of nice liner or an amazing liner. So that's both eyes done. Now I'm going to use some black mascara. This is Max Factor Experience. And Ty already has really naturally curly lashes, so she's very lucky. I'm also going to put plenty on the bottom lashes. So I'm going to put a set of Makeup Forever eyelashes on. So now the lashes are on, I'm going to use the liquid liner again just to go across the band because I want it to dry matte black. So I'm using this Suki powder, mixing grey and brown together and just filling in the brows a little bit. I want them to look darker and more polished but not really graphic simply because the line is very, very graphic and I don't really want another graphic element. So now I'm going to use some of Chanel's bronzing makeup base and this is a cream bronzer which is really, really good for sculpting as well. I'm going to use a MAC 116 brush and just start to shape the face around the outer edge. So a little bit onto the temple. And coming round 
under the cheekbone. Making sure it's really well blended in though, we don't really want to see any edges where it starts or where it ends. So that's the contouring done. Next I'm going to use a little bit of One Hot Minute by Benefit. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of that on the back of my hand and then using exactly the same brush pick up the product and use this along the top of the contour so it's starting to add a little bit of shine a little bit of highlight and also to blend in the edges of the contour powder, uh, contour cream. So just building up the one hot minute getting a nice shimmer and a shine. To finish off the cheek area I'm going to use this blusher by Bourgeois which is called a Brun Cuivre. Just to add a little bit of peachy shine just onto the cheek. So it's also got a little bit more shimmer in again. Not much, just a little hint there. So next on to lipstick and from my palette I'm going to use Revlon Matte 001 which is the one I used in the shoot. Just a slightly pale down Ty's natural lip colour. I'm also going to pat a little bit of lip balm onto that. I'm going to use Embrolease lip balm because it isn't shiny so you can use it with more matte lipsticks without having them increase the shine. So that's the finished look. The most important bit of the makeup is the graphic liner which I think just gives a great graphic sort of cat eye look. Um, it's nice as well because it's combined with quite a soft shading. This works well because it gives shape and definition to the eye but also it helps to soften down the hard look of the liner. You could of course do this liner much softer, you don't have to have it as dramatic as this. If you just used gel and then um, used an eyeshadow you could really soften and blend those lines if you want something that isn't as severe looking. Um, for the skin, a lovely warm skin, lovely glowing skin. The contour cream really helping to shape the face and then the shimmery bronzer I think helps to soften the contour but also puts a lot of more highlight into the skin. And then finishing off with the pop of peach on the cheeks with the blusher again to keep that lovely warmth in the face. And then finally a really natural, simple, beautiful nude lip. And that's it, so I hope you like the look.